after having just finished a full playthrough of Julia Among the Stars. I wanted to come back and give my thoughts about it. This is an adventure game centered around Rachel Manners, an astrobiologist on a mission far away from Earth. The expedition has turned rather tragic. And for most of the game, what you end up doing is going from place to place trying to piece together exactly what happened to your expedition. Now, the first question that I want to answer before I get to anything else is, does this have those ridiculous, frustrating adventure game puzzles that adventure games are so well known for having? And the answer to that is, thankfully, no, not really. And the reason I pose it as the first question is because I personally kind of wish that pretty much every adventure game review started with answering that question. Because those ridiculous adventure game puzzles are something that I've just pretty much completely lost patience with. Like, I can't stand them anymore. And I'm happy to report that this game does not really have them. That's not to say the puzzles are good, though. They're not really very good. They're just not very frustrating. So, let's start with my overall impressions. I think it gets off to a very strong start. I really enjoyed it in the beginning. But later on, it just got really dull, unfortunately. So let's start with the beginning and what exactly I liked about it. So early on, most of what you do involves piecing together the story of your fellow expedition members by reading their diary entries. And this is by far my favorite part of it. It's really wonderful. It's, it's classic sort of adventure game stuff. It's one of the things they're... I think the strongest at doing is just kind of letting you loose in an environment and you get to know the people there. And reading diary entries is a classic way of doing that and it's really fascinating. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed reading the diary entries. You really get to get a feel for who these people are and where they lived and what they, the things they dealt with. And I really enjoyed it. But after this initial part where you're dealing with lots of your fellow expedition members and reading their diaries and stuff like that. After this, it starts to focus less on your expedition members for quite a while and starts to focus more on alien life forms and, and alien planets as you go around this solar system. It starts to throw in a lot of mini-games, which at first was kind of interesting because it was something new. I hadn't encountered them before. I was still kind of coming to grips with them. I, I didn't particularly love them, but they weren't frustrating either. So it's kind of like, eh, okay, this is kind of neat. But the problem is that it throws in so many minigames again and again and again and again and again and again. And they're just so dull. They're so unbelievably dull. Like, every one just wore me down more and more to the point where uh, eventually I just ended up dreading finding any minigames because all of them just felt like wastes of time, like just progression blockers. Like, this minigame is now in between me and something that might actually be interesting. So they just, they just started to really annoy me. And here's some of the kinds of minigames that you get to play. One is where you have to build the blueprints, which is some sort of a kind of pipe minigame thing where you kind of put like pipe and connectors onto a, a board to get to the other side, and you have a limited amount of pieces. Another one is where you have to translate an alien language by matching things. Like, that that's really it. Like, this, like the top part has a certain amount of things and you match it to the thing down below that has the same amount of things and that translates an alien language for some reason. Another one is where you have to complete a pattern by clicking on things in the correct order. And the only way you can actually find out what the correct order is is by trial and error. No logic whatsoever, just trial and error. Another one is where you have to actually recover a blueprint by moving tiles around until they're in the correct spot. And then you have to do the pipes minigame to build it. And another one is where you have to translate an alien language, again, by trial and error, mostly. Another one is where you have to recover a note by putting the pieces back into place. The like sort of the classic, you know, I, I guess the classic put a note back into place thing, but also I think typically you see that with maps and stuff, right? putting all the pieces of a map back together. And another one is where you have to hack passwords by trial and error uh, again. Yay. Yeah, so most of the mini games are very, very dull. They're not interesting. Most of them just involve matching things or 
or they're just kind of thinly dressed up versions of games that you've already played and are very familiar with and have really never been interesting. Ever. They're just kind of thinly dressed up in uh, a veneer of kind of like like a veneer of narrative coding to kind of make it fit in with the world a little bit, but you can really easily see through that and see that, you know, the bare bones of how these puzzles work and how incredibly simple and really just boring most of them are. And that's not to say there are no good puzzles. There are actually a couple that I did truly enjoy. But having only a couple puzzles that are enjoyable in a game with dozens of them is not good. Also, to talk about the story for a little bit, the story was quite interesting early on, as I talked about with the diary entries from your crew members. That was that was very nice, and I was really into it at the time. But later on, it just becomes complete nonsense. Like, it goes completely off the rails. Like, they just start throwing all these alien species at you and crazy stuff and fate of the galaxy. I don't know. It's just a bunch of nonsense. I don't actually, I don't actually think it involved the fate of the galaxy, but... Nonetheless, it just becomes a, a, a bunch of nonsense, which was very unfortunate. Another problem that I had with it is that the protagonist, Rachel Manners, has virtually no personality whatsoever. One of the things that I really like about adventure games is getting to know the protagonist. You know, going around, like, let's use The Longest Journey for an example. Going around and just clicking on everything that I could possibly find just to hear what April Ryan would say about it was fascinating. It was a wonderful experience because not only did it reveal more about the world that you're in, because she's describing what you're looking at and how it fits into the world, but but it also reveals more about her character. And that's one of the incredibly powerful things that this classic kind of adventure game mechanic allows you to do. This mechanic of click on something to hear the protagonist talk about it. It allows you to do not only world building, but also character building. I think The Longest Journey is probably one of the best examples of this, because it, it it's just incredibly well written, and it does both great, and it's also, for at least for April Ryan, is voiced by the incredible Sarah Hamilton. So all of these things kind of come together to make this incredibly powerful thing. But, in Julia Among the Stars, when you click on something and hear Rachel talk about it, or you might hear some of your other kind of... AI companions talk about it, it doesn't really reveal much about much of anything. I mean, it, it does do world building a bit, because they do describe, you know, how it fits in with the world, but as far as the character building goes, no, like, not at all. When you click on stuff and examine it, it reveals almost nothing about the characters whatsoever. And by the end of the game, Rachel Manners was, like, almost not even a character. She's kind of just like a, a vessel. She is ostensibly the person you play as. She is technically the protagonist, but she's not really a character by the end of it. By the end of it, I knew almost nothing about her. I really didn't care about her much at all. It just fell completely flat. She's just such a, a flat character. There's, there's just literally almost no character development whatsoever. It's not like they... It's not like I felt that they tried to develop her character and just failed at it, but it generally feels like they didn't even really try to develop her character at all. Which is really strange. Almost like a Gordon Freeman-esque thing where the protagonist is kind of just a, a vessel for the character to be. Except unlike with Gordon Freeman, Rachel Manners actually is voice acted. She does actually talk, she's not a, a mute, and you don't play her in first person, so you do get to actually see her, so that doesn't really work the same way. If it ever even worked in the first place for Gordon Freeman. So, one of the things I like the most about adventure games is just spending time with interesting characters and an interesting story, and just kind of getting to know all of them, you know? At the end of an adventure game, I want to feel like I went through an adventure with a bunch of characters. Or a character. Doesn't matter how many. But I want to feel like I went on a journey. Got to know the story and all the characters around you and stuff like that. You know, I just want to feel kind of immersed in a story and feel connected to what's happening. But because of how dull the protagonist and all of the characters around you are, I just never got that. 
I, I never really felt all that connected, except at the very beginning where I did feel connected, not to the main character, but to the other characters that you're reading about through their diaries. But after that, I just felt completely disconnected. And at the end of the game, I couldn't really do much more other than shrug my shoulders and go, eh, okay, uh, I, I guess it's over. You know, I didn't feel that kind of sadness that I typically do at the end of a really good adventure game. When I feel, you know, at the end of a really good adventure game, I feel so connected to the characters that when it's over, I feel kind of sad because I've kind of lost something, you know, the journey's over, I'm, I'm done spending time with these interesting people. But I didn't feel that here. I just didn't really feel much of anything, which is kind of depressing now that I think about it. What's well, a really depressing note to end on? It's our ticket into the station. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so yeah. In summary, Julia Among the Stars is... It's an okay adventure game. It's not frustrating. It doesn't have really annoying puzzles. Not really. They're just kind of... Well, they kind of are annoying. They're, they're annoying in their dullness, not annoying in their hardness. Or their obscureness. They're just really dull and they end up feeling like wastes of time. And despite how connected I felt to the characters that you were reading about in the beginning of the game, by the end of it, I just didn't really feel very connected to much of anything. Julia Among the Stars is available from the official site, as well as Steam, and I'll have links to both of those in the description.